More carbs for gaining weight and more fat for losing weight is usually the advice you hear, but what's more important when you're adjusting your macros for fat loss and muscle gain is to make sure you hit minimum amounts of each macronutrient. And here they are, I'm telling you right now. Protein, you wanna hit 0.7 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. For fat, you wanna make sure you're getting at least 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight. And you fill in the rest with carbohydrates and maybe a little bit of fat depending on your own goals and your own calorie requirements. That's the long and short of it of macros for fat loss and muscle gain. But in this video, I've spoken to a bodybuilding PhD and a sports dietitian to figure out and bust some of the myths with a few different topics here. So today we're gonna to be talking about fat loss, like how fast you can lose fat and the best macros for fat loss. Muscle gain, how fast you can gain muscle and the best macros for muscle gain. And also we're gonna talk a little bit about carb cycling and calorie cycling, like adjusting the amount of calories and carbohydrates you eat on alternate days to potentially improve your body composition. So let's start with the question that everyone on the internet wants to know, how fast can you lose fat? So for this section, I'm gonna go into a good amount of detail about the minimum amount of each macronutrients you require for fat loss so you can have the most effective fat loss plan possible. And then I'm gonna much more quickly tell you how it's subtly different when you're trying to gain muscle. But first of all, you need to work out how many calories you burn in a day. So you can Google how to work out your total daily energy expenditure, your TDEE. That'll give you a rough idea of how many calories you burn to stay at your current weight. And then you have to subtract from that. And experts generally agree that a reasonable goal for fat loss is one pound of fat loss per week. So that's a deficit of 3,500 calories per week. This is sports dietitian Natalie Rizzo. The standard recommendation is about a pound of fat is 3,500 calories a week that you're trying to negate or eat, with it, uh, eat lower than. Um, so that's about 500 calories per day lower than your resting metabolic rate. That's not 100% proven. It, it's something that we used to think, and now we're kind of seeing that this could be different than what we thought it was. But that's, I mean, probably the most standard recommendation that I can give for that. But this depends on how lean you are. If you're obese, you can probably lose weight a bit faster. If you're like nearing the end of preparation for a bodybuilding show, fat loss is probably gonna come quite a bit slower. And that's why a competitive bodybuilder and sports nutrition researcher, Dr. Eric Trexler of Stronger by Science, he prefers to go by using percentages of body weight. Uh, with losing weight, usually you wanna shoot for a weight loss rate of about half to 1% of body weight per week. So, you know, if you're 200 pounds, you know, 1% of that would be two pounds. So, you know, a pound or two a week, if you're around 200 pounds would be, would be where you want to be. Another risk is that, especially as you get leaner with rapid weight loss, it can really take a hit on performance and the retention of muscle mass. Th that's why we want to not just worry about the ratio of macros, but the total number of calories is important because the total number of calories is what dictates how rapidly you're gaining or losing weight. All right, so that's your calories worked out. What about your macros, your protein, carbs, and fat? Here's what you do. You make sure you meet your minimum protein intake, make sure you meet your minimum fat intake, and then you basically fill the rest of your calories with carbohydrates, especially if you are low on calories, as you will be when you're trying to lose fat. Now, Dr. Trexler, he was a researcher in the effects of body composition on athletics. His PhD was on physiology and sports nutrition, and he agrees with our articles about the ideal amount of protein, which is 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. A lot of times people are taken aback by that number because the RDA in the United States is about half of that. Those values for RDAs are to make sure that you're not protein deficient, not to make sure that you've used protein to fully optimize your performance and your body composition goals. But as we also mentioned in our video about how much protein, if you're very, very lean, you might want to eat even more protein than that. There was a popular paper published in 2014 in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition which decided that it's better to judge a protein intake when you're very lean by the amount of lean mass you have, like your fat-free mass, as opposed to your total body weight. And it concluded, if you're very, very lean and you're trying to lose weight and you wanna preserve your muscle, you wanna eat like between 2.3 and 3.1 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. To make that a little bit more usable, not a lot of people can just go downstairs in their house, get on the DEXA and figure out their fat-free mass. You know, if you're someone who's very lean, that number is usually about 2.2 to 3 grams per kilogram of total body weight. If you're not quite as lean, if you're up around 25% body fat or so, then it'd be more like 1.8 to 2.3 grams per kilogram. 
All right, so you're trying to lose fat, we've got your calories, you get your protein. Now let's talk about fat. Do not eliminate fat. It is critically important for a vast number of functions in the human body, including optimal hormone production, gives you essential fatty acids, helps maintain like cell membranes, it helps you absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, which is probably important for testosterone. All this stuff is really important. And personally, I don't like to let my clients, whether they're bulking or cutting, get below like 0.6 or 0.7 grams per kilogram per day of fat. Now, sometimes it goes as high as 1.5 grams per kilogram per day if they're bulking, but even if they're cutting, even at the very end of a cut, even like a competitive bodybuilder who's really, really lean and really needs to cut their calories as much as they can get away with, I still don't like to go below 0.6 or 0.7. So that's a minimum of about 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight. So at this point in your fat loss plan, we have worked out your calories, your protein, and your fat, and now you have to fill in the rest of your calories. And if you are low on calories, then you probably wanna fill most, if not all of these remaining calories with carbohydrates. Here's why. When you're cutting weight and you're in a hypocaloric uh, situation, you, you really have to try to work as much carbohydrate in as you can. Um, the benefits there being uh, it'll help fuel whatever training you're able to do in that state. You know, a lot, a lot of the high level bodybuilders that I, that I talk with, once you're really lean and calories are really low, training takes a hit and you could use all the carbohydrate you can get. Going too low in carbs can kind of mess with your hormones a bit as well. Like leptin is a hormone that's like involved in fat loss and fat gain. And when you're really low in calories and you're really low in carbohydrates, evidence suggests that leptin gets like a little bit screwy and it can like mess with your fat loss plans. Also insulin is anabolic, so carbohydrates can help in that regard. You don't want to completely get rid of carbohydrates, but nonetheless, you should know that if you're really low in calories and you're trying to preserve muscle mass and you're very lean, you are going to struggle with fatigue at some point, no matter what you do. All right, so that's everything for fat loss. So here is your four point plan for losing fat. Number one, you wanna make sure you lose like 0.5 to 1% of your body weight every week. Number two, you wanna get about one gram of protein per pound of body weight, unless you're very, very, very lean, in which case you might wanna have more like one to 1.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Number three, you wanna get at least 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight. And number four, you wanna fill in the rest of your calories with carbohydrates. So for me, I weigh about 200 pounds. I would eat like 2000 calories per day. I'd have 150 grams of protein. That's like 0.75 grams per pound of body weight. I would have about 80 grams of fat. That's like 0.4 grams of fat per pound of body weight. And I would fill in the rest of the carbohydrates, which comes to roughly 175 grams of carbohydrates. And that's it. So you can just take that template and apply it to yourself. All right, so what about muscle gain? Now, this section of the video is not going to be quite as long because we've already established those minimums you wanna hit. But basically, you don't have to be as strict when you're trying to gain muscle because you're eating more calories. You don't have to be quite as mindful of reaching thresholds that you would have to think about when you're really low on calories and maybe every nutrient kind of counts. It's a little bit easier for a lot of people to gain muscle. So first of all, we need to say, how many calories are you gonna shoot for if you're trying to gain muscle? Maybe an extra 100 to 200 calories a day that would be about yeah half a pound a week dr trexler meanwhile goes by body weight if i've got somebody who's bulking um usually we're going to shoot for like a target weight gain of 0.25 to 0.5 percent of body weight per week and that actually comes from a, a really good review paper uh, that was published just a few days ago that was looking at kind of off-season diets and bodybuilders and the reason you want to be careful with your rate of weight gain is because we know for certain you can only gain so much muscle in, in so much time. So if you have this like really rapid weight gain, we, we can be very confident that a lot of that weight is weight that you probably didn't want to gain, uh, depending on your goal. So usually a quarter to a half percent of body weight per week when gaining weight. Now look, if you're really, really thin, you've never picked up a barbell before, or if you're enhanced, uh, you might be able to gain muscle more quickly than that. On the other hand, if you're very, very experienced, you've been lifting for like 20 years, you've got quite a lot of muscle, your muscle gain will be quite a lot slower than that. But for the average athlete, those are pretty good recommendations to follow. So that's the calories. What about the rest of your macronutrients? As I mentioned, you've got a bit more leeway when you are trying to bulk up a bit. But one thing to note is with your calorie goal, once you reach that minimum protein intake and that minimum fat intake that we already talked about, the gap between the two is going to be larger because you have a larger overall calorie count. So what I'm trying to say here is you're going to be eating quite a bit more carbohydrates than you would have been before. You know, a general range would be like three to five grams per kilogram per day when, uh, when bulking. 
um, to make sure that you have, you have enough carbohydrates basically to fuel training and exercise and get your energy in. All right, so for me, let's say that I'm trying to gain some muscle. I weigh 200 pounds right now. So I'm gonna eat like say 3000 calories per day. So we'll have 150 grams of protein. If I have room in my macronutrients, I like to have a bit more fat and I do when I'm bulking. So we'll have 100 grams of fat per day as well. Then the rest of my calories, I'm just gonna take from carbohydrates. So thus far, I've got 1500 calories from the protein and the fat. So that means I'm getting 1500 calories from the carbohydrates, which is 375 grams of carbohydrates. So again, quite a bit more carbohydrates when you're trying to gain muscle. But again, you can play with those ratios of fat to carbs a little bit more than when your macronutrients and your calories are very tightly restricted. But for the general person who's doing weight loss, um, even like somebody whose main exercise is just lifting weights, if you're a power lifter, bodybuilder, whatever, when you're bulking, that exact ratio of carbs to fat doesn't matter that much because as long as you have, you know, a couple hundred grams of carbs per day or 100, 300, whatever it might be for your body size, uh, you're probably going to be just fine. So that is the most important information about macros of fat loss versus muscle gain. But before I go, I wanted to touch on a strategy that a lot of athletes use that's a little bit more high end and it's called carb cycling and calorie cycling. So like, look, at the end of the week, if you look at all the calories and macronutrients, the number is gonna be the same. But what a lot of people like to do is to eat more calories on days they're working out and fewer on rest days. So for instance, if you're trying to gain muscle, you might put your excess on workout days and eat at maintenance on rest days. Or if you're trying to lose fat, you might eat at maintenance on workout days and put your deficits on rest days. It's the same calories and macros at the end of the week, but... It's interesting because there's actually research on it is beneficial. Um, it's not something, just some crazy trend that people picked up along the way. <laughs> people look to have more carbs on workout days because carbs fuel your workouts. And then they... Uh, cut their carbs on recovery days. And the reason that this even came about was because a lot of people were following these low carb diets and finding that they're not super sustainable for the long term uh, because eventually your body's kind of craving carbs because it needs it for that energy to give you uh, the fuel for exercise. And so in doing, so in finding that, people found that if they had more carbs on the exercise days, they would have the energy that they need, but then they don't necessarily need that on the rest days because they're not doing as much workout. Some research has shown that timing your calories and carbohydrates around your workouts might be useful for recovery and performance, body composition, insulin sensitivity, appetite control, that sort of thing. But it's really important to remember here that the most important things to think about when you're trying to lose fat or gain muscle is your calories, your workouts, your macronutrients. After that, it's like your micronutrients and your sleep. And then after that, once all that is on point, you might wanna think about like, yeah, timing your calories and carbohydrates at the right times. But you just have to remember to pick your battles and focus on the most important stuff first. All right, that's everything from me on macros for fat loss versus muscle gain. I really wanna thank Dr. Eric Trexler of Stronger by Science and Natalie Rizzo for coming on and giving their expertise. The full written article, by the way, is in the description below and make sure you subscribe as well because we've got a ton more nutrition and fitness content coming up.